here. Hey, Donnie D, man. Um, enjoyed your show last night. Thank you, sir. <laughs> we enjoyed having you. Oh, man, appreciate it. Hey, check this out. How far um, are you away from um, that place where they had the Oscars at? I believe the Oscars, I know it was in L.A., so mm -hmm. any place in L.A., I'm 20 to 30 minutes. I'm 30 minutes, 40 minutes from the beach. I'm 30 min 10 minutes from Dodger Stadium, 10 minutes from downtown L.A., the Staples Center. So it just depends on what venue they had it in. You know, I could be there in no time flat, brother. I was just curious, did you hear that smack from where you lived? <laughs> hey, that was the smack heard around the world. What you talking about, man? What you talking about? Hey, what's the buzz? What's going on around your town? I know everybody was talking about it. It's man, uh, I got comedian friends. They jumping on stage with it. I had, um, um, what's his name? Um, Ronnie Laws on my TV show the other day. Jazz saxophonist, Johnny Laws. And he referenced to a joke about it. Hey, don't say nothing for somebody to get slapped around here. You know, everybody got something to say. And there's two different camps. There's the Will camp and there's the Chris camp. You know, it's like, for some people, it's like talking about Trump and Biden, you know? <laughs> it's some of the people I'm talking to. So I just, I kind of stay away from that conversation because, you know, people have their own opinions. I try to throw my opinions in on it, although I am on the Chris Rock team, but I don't want to argue with nobody on it. Right. But I will say this. I will say this. And I'm going to be Donnie D on this. If it was that much of a problem and you're on international TV, brothers, Wait till the after party and go deal with that, man. Wait till the show's over and go deal with that. Don't do display the streets on national TV. Because basically, to me, that was the streets, man. Yeah. You know, you're talking about my woman, I'm going to come get you. you know? <laughs> That's yeah. the streets. It is. Yeah, I appreciate you answering some of because I know um you're out there, you know, in LA area and you know a lot of people in the business. I didn't really want to put you on the spot. Oh, I was man. curious what you thought about it and stuff. Yeah, like man, that's just just my opinion, man. Uh I wonder if the rock would have been up there and told that joke, would he have ran up on the rock, you know, or Fred uh Cedric the Entertainer, Dave Chappelle, Eddie Murphy. Would well, he have ran even, up even Mo? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, even Mo. <laughs> yeah, that's even Mo Jones. Yeah, Mo Jones. <laughs> he would have rolled up on Mo Jones, that's for sure. <laughs> no, nah, I don't think that would even happen, man. Yeah. You know, uh, the two smallest guys in comedy is Kevin Hart and Chris Rock. Chris Rock's about the skinniest, and and Kevin Hart's about the the shortest. So they, you know, the two shortest guys in comedy. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know. You got to make choices in life. And we all make mistakes. I understand that. And in the heat of, uh, you know, your wife rolling her eyes, looking at you, what you going to do? You going to let him talk like that? What you going to do? <laughs> so, I got this, honey. I got this, baby. I'm going to go take care of it right now. You know? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> uh, poor guy. Seems yeah. like he poor guy. Him. You're right. Yeah. Poor guy. He seems like, I don't know the people and stuff, but it seems like he's henpecked or something. Yeah, well, you, you said it lightly. Ooh. You said it lightly with the words impact. <laughs> I got another word for it, but I ain't but I ain't gonna say it on the interview, but <laughs> 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 no, but like let smart. me let me just say this stuff. All right. She has put him into some positions that you know their their lives are already out there in the public's eye. She has a TV show, something about the round table, red table. Yeah, the red table, yeah. Yes. And she got on there with him and told her about her entanglement with some young rapper. Did you see that? I saw a lot of that stuff. I think his name is August. Yes, August. Mm -hmm. Right. And then she said, oh, well, it was an affair. You know, he starts crying. The dude's hurt. And I understand that, man. You know, and, and, and to, you know, it's like going on Jerry Springer and you telling the whole world about it, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, it, you know, it's, I don't care how many millions of dollars you got, man. Mm -hmm. If you in love with a woman, which he most likely is, or he wouldn't have done what he did, 
and she cheated on you, that's going to hurt. I don't know whether if he's cheated or not, but that's going to hurt. And you, you compete with a young, handsome guy in his 20s and you 50. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's tough, man. I, I would never want to be in those position, that position. Mm -hmm. Would you? No, not at all. No. <laughs> Mm -mm. Nah. And you know, in a um, situation like that, what's um, what's that quote? It's um, it's um, psychological. It's not logical. It's psychological. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. That's what's going on with those people and stuff. Yeah. Hey, Donnie D, I appreciate you being honest about that topic. Like I said, I don't hey. need to put you on the spot. No, 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 no. The, I'm gonna be real. Yeah. Since the last time I seen you, you know, since last time you were on the show and stuff. Understand, you've been doing a lot of things. Got a whole bunch of new things going on and stuff. You mind sharing them with the folks? Yeah, well, um, a lot of entertainers from the old school have uh, started calling on me to MC their shows. And uh, let me turn that off. Goodness gracious. And um, they are asking me to, um, to come in and, and do their shows for them. And I can't, you know, I mean, uh, I'm not an MC per se, but I got out there and I did a couple and uh, I'm getting good at it. So I've got a couple shows lined up and uh, I got one in Vegas. I won't, you know, it's not been taken, you know, it's not in pen yet, but it's a well-known entertainer that uh, the managers and Donnie D. So, I mean, it's an extra hustle. And then besides that, we're launching another TV show. We've got Behind the Curtains. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to start another one called Donnie D's Soul Sessions. Mm -hmm. It will be basically Behind the Curtains without the musicians, without the entertainers. I'm going to have more uh, sit down on the couch talks with uh, artists, um, poets, people behind the camera. Uh, people, podcasters, black business, uh, it, men and women. And uh, I'm going to try to incorporate Zoom on it so that I can reach out to people like yourself and have you as a guest on the show. That shouldn't be any problem because we at, the, at Pasadena Media, they've got the technological geniuses over that place. I didn't do everything. And yeah. some guys who do shows. You mean unlike us? Yeah, like, <laughs> we, like yeah. <laughs> yeah, for, for y'all so don't know, man, we had a time and stuff getting this connected today in all kinds of ways. Well, <laughs> not to cut you off um, to go too much on a tangent, but I got to share with the people that we had um, like the time difference. There's a three hour time difference. I'm here in New York. Right. Now, D out there in California, so stupid me. I'm thinking because we three hours behind. So I, anyway, I get the, um, the time all screwed up. I'm contacting Donnie D about 5.30 in the morning. He's <laughs> 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 like, man, the sun. And so we all screwed up. We finally got it right. Then right. once we got it right, we ran into technical difficulties and stuff. Right. Oh, man, it's so funny. But Donnie D here, please get back to your show, though. I yeah, yeah, but, but you know, that. when when COVID hit and, you know, they closed me down and uh, a lot of other guys down, some people just went to doing their shows via Skype. Mm -hmm. So they do the Skype thing and uh, they, some kind of way they connect up with Pasadena Media where the engineer is and he sends it anyway, because I've been on some people's shows in the, Kevin, the engineer, is on in Pasadena Media, and he's doing it all out. But it works. That's what I'm basically trying to say. Mm -hmm. It works. So if uh, I'm going to try to incorporate that that way, mm, that's just, yes. Something just hit me. I could hit up a whole lot of people nationwide that way. Mm -hmm. But that's what we're going to be doing. Then we are going to, I can't pan the camera over to you. But I got a bunch of, a couple of new um, uh, mixers, and I've got new headphones and new mics and stuff, because we're going to start taping uh, a show called Donnie D Soul Sessions. Mm -hmm. And so that show, unlike Blog Talk, Blog Talk to me is AM radio. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 
uh, when you start taping shows, it's FM or it's um, satellite, crystal clear. You know, when you're listening to my show on Blog Talk, it's it's kind of clear, but it's not stereo. It's mono. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and to be in the big boy league, you got to have stereo, man, in my opinion. Yeah, man. You know. Mm -hmm. Now, your show, um, The Behind the Curtain, where was that um, recorded? Where's the studio for that at? Who oh, we you? have a, it's a studio called Pasadena Media. Mm -hmm. It's in Pasadena. And we are on Roku. We are on Fire TV, Apple TV, any of the smart TVs uh, you download, um, Pasadena Media. And it'll pop up and just go through. And I don't have a schedule of my show, but there's a lot of other good shows on Pasadena Media also. You know, it's local stuff. And some stuff is not. They have other shows that come in from out of town and stuff. They were telling me the other day when I was there, the guy pointed towards the all of the, um, the um what do they call it? Uh, awards and, and, and trophies that they had in the box. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they, they like supposed to be like number two in the country of public access TV. That's what's up. And then, Andy, you're also an author. One of the people who um, checked you out last time, recall. Um, yes. We got um, some more books out since our last end. The one I have here, one moment. So I'll screw this up. Let's see. Yeah, got this one book here. Single Mother's Guide to Raising Black Boys. But yes. I think you have some more books after this one. Yes, indeed. I don't know if you have a copy there or not. Not yet. With... Okay. Uh, uh, sit right there. Let's take half a second, brother. Okay, take your time. <laughs> don't go nowhere. All right. Yeah, we'll get Donnie D to talk about um, some of the people that he has on his Donnie D Soul Sunday program that we were checking out last night. Uh, he has some really okay, really da, 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 da. and this book is entitled mm -hmm. From Crack to Christ, Part One. Now, you notice that I have the number two in there. Mm -hmm. It's a long story of why I had to do that, and I'm going to tell it to you real short. Okay. Why that happened. While I was writing this book, I was so, you know, hyped up about it, and I started putting on a... Uh, Facebook and on social media, social media, my new book from Crack to Christ, Crack to Christ. That was about five years ago. Mm -hmm. So when I finally did go to get it published, well, I got it copyright. When I would get it copyrighted, somebody else had, took that name. So I'm like, you know, my sister was telling me, dang, you got to stop putting your stuff out before you get it copyrighted. And I didn't. So I had to change it and put the number two and put part one because there's another Crack to Christ out there right now. And so, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it is what it is. But if you go to Amazon, I tell people, Crack, number two, Christ, part one by me, Franklin Donnie D. Lewis. Understood. Yeah, we live and learn, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of like we did with um, getting this meeting together here. <laughs> Stuff to do. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And check this out, Donnie D. Um, I was um while you went to get the, um your book, I was telling people about your um show, Donnie D Soul Sunday. You mind telling people about some of the guests that you had on there? Some of the Ooh. Names, some big names that you had. Oh on there. man, that's yeah. yeah, okay. Let's see what I can go through. All right. I've had Billy Paul, me and Mrs. Jones fame, although he's had a lot of he was a jazz singer from New York, had a lot of different songs. Mm -hmm. I've had uh, Stylistics, Blue Magic. Mm -hmm. I've had, uh, let's see, one of the fifth dimension. I've had Confunction. I had one of Cameo. I've had uh, Melba Moore. Matter of fact, she was my first guest. Oh, wow. I've had Chris Jasper, Isley Brothers. I've had Climax, Cheryl Cooper at Climax. I've had Bernadette Cooper at Climax. Man, it, I must have had, I've had so many different guests. Man. And when people ask me that question, mm -hmm. I can't even, you know, I can go through the, just a few that I just went through. Cause it's, it's, it, it, and I'm not bragging, it's just God has blessed me mm -hmm. with many of, I'm gonna tell you, I, there's a guy on satellite radio and he is on a show called um, 
Heart and Soul on XM Radio, Heart and Soul. And he has um, a show, and then what he would do is he'd listen to my show and whoever my guest was, mm -hmm. and then the next week, he'd have the same guest. I had Delphonics on one week. Mm -hmm. The next week, he had the Delphonics. I had on, uh, who was it? Uh, shucks. I think it was, uh, was the Stylistics? Well, anyway, I had, I think it was Stylistics or Blue Magic next week. He had him on. So I'm I'm hitting the dude up. Hey, man, you like my show so much? Why don't you plug me into getting the gig there? I ain't heard nothing from you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I ain't heard nothing from you. <laughs> That's all it is. It's just following the leader. Hey, Donnie yeah. D, I know you have some time constraints today. So I um, wanted to make sure we covered everything. Um, wanted to touch on the new things that you're up to in your books and stuff. And, yeah. And... Um, and I know we used up a lot of time, you know, trying to get set up. No, man, just go go on. I'm good. I'm good. So what I wanted to get to was, um, you know, in light of everything that's going on and stuff, right? Do you have any, like, words of encouragement, um, Donnie D, words of wisdom for people <laughs> out here? Well, you know, uh, you know, there's some tough times going on right now. We got wars. We got homelessness. Gas prices are rising. Mm -hmm. People are not getting enough food to eat. You know, it's, it's gangs. It's just, you know, I don't know if it's the book of Revelations, but it's one of the books in the Bible that talks about these days that we're living in right now. Anytime. And only thing that I think we haven't seen yet is, um, well, we've seen the pestilence for a minute when he had all of those uh, cichlids, whatever they call them, flying through the country about a year ago. Mm -hmm. But a famine, we haven't hit the famine yet. But we've had the wars, we've had the pestilence, but we haven't hit the famine. And the famine, people say, is around the corner. But I just saying all that to say this. Get your act together. Stock up on your supplies. I'm not trying to be doomsday, but I think it's going to get a little worse before it gets better, in my opinion. And just be, be right. And I'm going to say be right with your God, hmm. you know, and, uh, and you'll make it through. You know, you'll get the wisdom, the knowledge from your Holy Spirit. And uh, some people call it a conscience. I don't call it a conscience. I call it a Holy Spirit. It will give you, put you in the right direction. And uh, just stay strong, man, because right now people are falling left and right, man. People are falling left and right, you know. It's, it's, it's tough times, but on the strong survive, man. Yeah, man. Hey, who, who wrote that song? Um, put that, uh, Jerry oh, Butler. Yes, yeah, Jerry Butler. Survived. That was my jam. Okay, let me tell you something about Jerry Butler. Right. You know he came from a singing group. Mm -hmm. And you know what group he came from? Mm. The Impressions. He was the lead singer of the group called Impressions. Then Curtis Mayfield came in and took over. And they had uh, like songs like, uh, People Get Ready, There's a Train a Coming, and a We're a Winner. That's probably a little bit of 40 year time. But yeah. yeah. But yeah, Jerry Butler. That's the ice man cometh. The ice man they used to call it. Wow. That's cool. Hey Diane D, you know, um, if you check out this news, I see these kids doing a lot of stuff that um shoot, even some adults wouldn't be doing. You know, like um the eleven year olds on um scooters. They're <laughs> on scooters going around doing stick-ups. What do you think is going on with the youth today and stuff? Because I know out in California, they had um, the CRT thing going on. I know you were involved yeah. in schools and stuff, too. And um, just a whole bunch of weird things, like, um, to me, weird, like teaching um, kindergartners, third graders about sexuality. That is, that's all fake. It's all fake. That's really fake news, man. Hey, yeah. no teacher teaching no first and second and third grader nothing about sex. You don't get idea. that stuff until high school and sex education. Yeah. If I would be against somebody teaching my uh, elementary school kid about sex, it's all a lie, man. Mm -hmm. You know that that's all. It's all a bull. Being What's in really education, I know that's the left, in my opinion, just putting. You know, it's it's it, it's deep. It goes back into the 
it goes all the way back to uh, number 45. Ah. You know, it, it's all of these things to swing people in another direction. You know, it's like cancel culture and all this other stuff, you know, about books. Te they don't want you to teach about slavery. They don't want to teach about the Holocaust. It's going to hurt my kids' feeling. Hey, how you think my kids feel? How you think I feel? <laughs> you know, yeah. We went through it. My grandparents, my great grandparents, we went through it. But you worried about some, and these kids of all races need to know what happened in this country. Mm -hmm. You know, they need to know the history so it doesn't go back. But, you know, it's just so much. And like in Florida right now, Governor DeSantis mm -hmm. has a don't say gay bill. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and it wasn't a freedom of speech as far as the First Amendment, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And you talk about, I mean, I don't know. He's mad at Disney right now because Disney's against it. And they're the number one employer for the state of Cal of, of uh, Florida. Mm -hmm. But the CEO of Disney came out and said, no, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know, it's no. just. It's just little stuff, man, that, you know, then out here, I don't know if you guys out there, they got to smash and grab. They pulling up to um, diamond, I mean, to jewelry stores, smashing windows, taking off with millions of dollars worth of diamonds. They're going into floors like Walmart and Target with big plastic bags, filling it up and just walking out the door. Yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah, we think all that comes. It was a lot of permissiveness, it seemed like, back over that thing they called the... Um, quote unquote, summer of love, you know, when everybody was tearing up the streets. It seems like it may be, um, I don't know, a carryover from that. I really don't know. But why well, so much lawlessness now? Do you understand where that's coming from? Well, a lot of people are frustrated, mm -hmm. for one thing. And, and there's frustration on both sides, man. And I hate to say sides, but there is sides, man. There's yeah. no way of looking about it. Mm -hmm. You know, you got that side, you got this side. What side you on? Either you with us or you you for me or you against me. That's yeah. basically where, yeah, exactly. where it's breaking down to. No and in uh, yeah, so you know, there's 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 sides that is you know talking about uh, justice and Black Lives Matter, and 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 then you got this other side is saying you got too much justice, all lives matter, or white lives matter, you know, or, you know, and. It, it's just, uh, you know, it's frustration, man, and amongst a lot of people. And then, you know, you've got people that look at uh, the future because the statistics say mm -hmm. 2044, the United States is going to be a brown nation. And, you know, it's a fact. I mean, everybody's mixing and blending, mm -hmm. which is beautiful in my opinion. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are scared of losing power. You know, and uh, ain't nobody taking nothing from you, man. This, I think this country is big enough mm -hmm. to spread. This pie is big enough to spread for everybody equally, you know, to get what they, you know, everybody get a fair shot. It, now, if you work for it. Now, I don't think everybody just wants to stick their hand out and, you know, get freebies. Right. You know, but mm -hmm. now, it's so, deep. So, um always got to ask this because, you know, I'm into music. Okay. I've seen um, on the news, I'm not exactly certain where it's happening. I don't know if it's out there in your way or somewhere in between us. Here, um, they got this thing where rappers are shooting one another over, I guess, they're singing about each other. And that seems to be pretty prevalent. I don't know if you've seen that on the news. I heard a little something. You but music got something to do with it because I know it's different than the stuff we grew up with. That's what I'm getting ready to say. We've always had had that man. Remember Ice Cube made no Vaseline. Oh, you shoot. know, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it was it um 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 what's the name? Mama said knock you out. Yeah. LL Cool J. Mm. You know, I think that uh what's the name? Cool Mo D. He had one out. Mama said knock you out was against Cool Mo D. Cool Mo D. Made one against, uh, no, was it Cool My Deal? It was a Big Daddy Kane, one of them mm -hmm. that made one against him. So we've always had them battle songs. And that's all they was. Even when the Tupac and Biggie, mm -hmm. you know, Tupac made that one about a, your wife and all of that, you know. I don't think, but, you know, and that was the beginning of mm -hmm. bloodshed yeah. when that East Coast, West Coast rivalry started. But what you're talking about right now, that's insanity, man. Yeah, man. It's insanity. You know, and the thing about it is, if you're a rapper, it's hard to get a venue, promoters to allow you in their venues 
because people died. Look at the Travis Scott uh, concert. Exactly. You know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so if, if you're known to be a violent person, you can't make no money with that kind of, of uh, following and, and, and that type of behavior. You might as well not even be in the business, man. Mm-hmm. You might have to be a rapper like Will Smith. Parents just don't understand. <laughs> just be a clean cut wow. rapper. <laughs> That's kind of cool. It went full circle right back to Will Smith. <laughs> That's too cool. Hey, Johnny D. Yeah. Um, I know we had agreed about time and stuff. And check keep this going. Out. Um, are there any last words that you'd like to leave everybody with before we end this? And hopefully you'll come back again. You know, oh, we got man. More time and stuff, you know? You know, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry, but yeah, what's some last words you got for folks and stuff? Well, I always just like to just leave people with, treat people like how you want to be treated. And, uh, you know, I always say praise God and uh, try to live a good, clean life. I know it's hard. You know, it's hard for us in this world. It's, uh, you know, a lot of us say, I'm not of this world. That's what Jesus said. I'm not of this world. Mm-hmm. And, uh just try to do the best thing. And the most important thing I like to tell the people mm-hmm. is on Sunday nights, listen to Donnie D's Soul Sundays on Blog Talk Radio from 6 to 9. And on Saturdays, listen to Donnie D's Soul Gumbo <laughs> from 6 to 9. And also go to YouTube to Donnie D's Soul Sundays and watch my TV show Behind the Curtains or get it from Roku or whatever your hosting place is. <laughs> Let me throw that. Oh, two more things I have to tell the people. What's that? Pick up a copy of From Crack to Christ, Amazon.com, bars and over like And they should the right one, right? Yeah, sure part two. Right one. Part one with the two from Crack to Christ. And remember, uh, um, Brian Barcelo's guest, me, Franklin Donnie D. That's who it's written by. And before we go, what have you been into, my brother? I understand you've been practicing guitars and yeah, and yeah. like what you been into to um, open up more. I've been focused on a podcast, been practicing guitar, practicing the keyboard. What I want to do, like when I started music, I want to bore everybody out there. But when I when I started music, I started doing um on FL Studios. You know the computer program you can make. Okay, music. but. I don't know. I didn't, that didn't like really settle well with me. I wanted to be able to play an instrument. So what right. I'm trying to do is learn an instrument so I can incor- uh, incorporate it into my live performances. One thing I didn't realize is how challenging it is to actually yeah. learn how to play. You know, I yeah. look at those guys, they make it look so easy and stuff. No, it's not that easy. No, <laughs> they make it look like just they can pick up a guitar and play with their eyes closed like my brother, man. Some mm-hmm. people just but it's practice, 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 man. Mm-hmm. And I, my schedule doesn't allow that, mm-hmm. you know. And, and but I should, if I, if I want it, they say if you want it that bad, you'll do it. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll make time if you really want it. If there's a woman out there you want bad, you'll chase after her until you get her. Mm-hmm. Look at that guitar as that. Matter of fact, a guitar is shaped like a woman too. They say oh, the that's what that shape. Yeah, that's yeah. Ooh. So <laughs> <laughs> you look at your guitar as her, and you play her every day, at least who, thirty minutes. Who had the guitar named Lucille? BB King. There you go. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, hey Dig Johnny it. D, thank you so much for doing this podcast. Man, I thank appreciate you. you so much. Appreciate you too, Brian. Everybody, everybody, thank you for joining the podcast. <laughs> Once again, thank you, Johnny D. And hey, you guys, remember to check out our previous Yambar podcast guests. And always remember that the Yambar podcast is a place where you make it happen. Peace, everybody. Peace. Johnny D, thank you again. All right, brother. Peace. Talk to you soon. All right, man. Looking forward.